Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. I'm George Conley and today uh, I filmed one of my uh, chipping practice sessions here. So I'm going to be walking you through what I do as you watch that first shot. That was my first shot, so I have a little bit of an excuse. But uh, just to start off my chipping, I always hit uh, six shots with each of my wedges. So this is my 60 degree. Uh, what I do is I hit three shots off the back leg and then I switch to the front leg and these aren't quite flop shots but they are larger swings with um, with a little bit of a, uh, a higher trajectory off the club face. So I hit three off the back and off the front foot uh, starting with my 60 degree. Uh, the next club that I'm going to be switching to here is my 58 degree uh, and again playing three off the back foot three off the front foot. I often get asked when I talk about my uh, gapping in clubs why I have a 58 degree and a 60 degree. Uh, the reason for me is they serve pretty similar distances, um, but I do have a different model club. I have a Callaway for my 58 degree and a 60 degree, in, uh, as, which is a Lucky Wedge. And um, it's not like a Lucky Wedge, like a Superstition. That's the actual brand that makes it. But um, the Lucky Wedge is uh, has a lot more bounce and it's a much lighter club, which helps me out with um, with some certain sand bunker shots and uh, some flop shots, which we'll see at the end. But you know, I'm just hitting those three off the back foot, three off the front foot here, going through the motions with my 58 degree. Then I swap over to my gap wedge. Uh, this is a 52 degree, which is the same model as the 58. These are both S-grind Callaway MD4 wedges. Uh, with standard shaft length and everything else. So when I'm hitting these shots, I'm really not focused on how they roll out. And I'm not focused on how they roll out for a couple of reasons. The first is the green I'm chipping on is not a very true green. Uh, it's very bumpy, it's aerated, it just doesn't roll out well. So I'm focusing on landing points, but uh, above all, I'm just focusing on the feeling of impact. I just want to be making clean contact. So as you can see, uh, go, just going through these, not all of them are clean contact. These are my first swings of, of the day when I go to the range, but uh, some of them are, are solid. And as long as I'm just making good impact, that'll allow me to go into my next drill uh, after I go through my pitching wedge shots uh, much more effectively. So with the pitching wedge, I, I don't hit the three off the front foot because I never hit my pitching wedge off the front foot. This is just a bump and run shot. As you can see, uh, it's a much more abbreviated finish and uh, the ball comes out much, much lower. So now that all of that's done, we're gonna switch over to the first drill that I do. Now the first drill that I do is the head cover drill, which I'm not sure if I've ever discussed on the YouTube page. I've definitely addressed it on the Instagram page. It's my favorite chipping drill to do uh, for a number of reasons, and I'll explain them all here. Um, so what you do is you just take a, uh, a head cover off of any of your clubs. I took the driver head cover and I put it just, um, I don't know, maybe five yards onto the green and I was hitting from five yards off the green. So a pretty standard chip here, but all of them I'm focused on is having my chips land right on top of that head cover. Now, uh, I believe I first saw this drill from Keith Bennett and I was expecting it to be very easy and I would expect to hit it in maybe three or four shots and get on with my life, um, but it's not. This is a very difficult drill to do, and I actually do it with all four of my clubs, and this drill alone takes up a great deal of my practice, um, just because it takes me so long. So we're looking at a lot of the takes on my 60 degree. Um, again, focusing strictly on the landing point here. Um, with, with the chipping greens, unless you want a nice chipping green, it's hard to hit a bunch of chips and expect them all to go close to the hole because you're going to get wayward bounces and everything. So um, it's just tough to expect that. So there I go. I got my first one on. So getting that 60 degree out of hand, switching over to the 58 degree. Uh, I just posted a video. The video before this was about pra practicing um, with pressure and uh, simulating pressure throughout your golf practice. So this is another way that I do that with chipping. Um, if you want to watch the pressure video, I will link it up below, but uh, there's a bad shot. There are plenty of them. Uh, I may have cut some out, may have left some in, but um, the reason I like this drill is because you have to hit it. It's, it's a definite goal. If I don't hit it with my 50 degree, I will keep hitting it until either I just give up because of time or I end up hitting it. So it might take a while. Uh, believe me, there are a lot of close calls, but it's such a simple drill. Anyone can do it. Uh, if you don't have a head cover, you can use a towel. You can bring out a piece of paper. Perhaps you have a book with you. I don't know what you have, but um, there are plenty of different things you can do. You just want a very small landing zone for this drill. 
Now in terms of my technique here, the ball is going to be off my back foot, uh, just like those front on shots that you saw. Uh, again, keep in mind that I have a 50, ooh, taking the glasses off. Well, okay, now I mean business. I think I've taken too many shots at the 58 degree, and now I'm just getting ready for, uh, getting ready to hit it because I'm growing a little bit impatient. But what I'm basically working on here is just a little bit of downward impact, just clipping the ball. Uh, spin obviously isn't of concern here. I'm just focused on good contact. Um, and, and getting th all the way through the ball, having that upper body come through. Uh, personally, with my chipping, I'm, oh, I got it. And there's a fist pump, great. <laughs> so now we're switching over to the 52. Um, personally, with my chipping, I am much less focused on technique. Uh, I'm similarly, uh, I have a similar focus with my putting. I'm less focused on my technique, and I really like to just work on my feel, uh, especially on chips like this where there's a definite spot. Uh, you can't have a certain swing saying, oh, I'm gonna raise my club exactly this far and then I'm gonna hit it and it's gonna land right here. That's just not how short game really works. Uh, it's not how any of golf works, but especially short game. So I'm not very uh, technically focused here. I wouldn't say that um, you can look at my technique in this video and call it exemplary technique. It certainly can't be, it should not be taught, but um, basically the focus is just getting feel over how how hard I need to be swinging, my tempo, uh, how high I should be bringing that club back. Uh, I haven't played a lot of golf in the past few months. Um, I believe the day before I recorded this, I played 18 holes and I scored very poorly. And it was mostly because I just I, I was chipping and putting so much. I just don't have that feel. And drills like this give you that goal, and they just allow you to have the repetition aspect of golf, uh, the repetition aspect of practice, which I preach in every single video that I talk about practice. Um, if, you ha if you're putting yourself in great positions and you're only doing it for one or two swings, it's gonna be useless. You need to repeat and repeat and just keep practicing away. And this is so important for the parts of the short game that I'm showing you, um, especially chipping, putting, and there we go. Oh, wow. Really, that's the most exciting you'll see out of me. I got the 52. So now I'm going to take this pitching wedge. Um, and this ball is going to come out much lower, much hotter. But I'm not concerned about where these balls end up. I'm concerned about the landing point. Uh, with the pitching wedge, that landing point is going to be this exact same. It's just going to roll out much further because it's coming in a lot lower and a lot hotter. So did that hit it? I think that hit it on my second shot, maybe my third one. Or maybe this will hit it. Skinned it. That's what that, that's what that hand signal means. It means I just barely skinned it. <laughs> I think I have a replay for you up close. Oh, you can't really see it, but you got to trust me. So that head cover drill is always a go-to, and that's honestly what I spend the most of my time working on. It's just that landing point. So right now, um, in the background, I'm just working on my 60 degree. Uh, these are basically flop shots. Just uh, putting that ball front in the stance, opening the stance, opening the club face. And I've, I've got some pretty big swings here, just trying to have the ball uh, land lightly. Um, flop shots are not something that I use a ton. When I first started golfing a lot, I would flop everything and everything, anything and everything, and uh, it was just my shot. But the margin of error is just so high on it. So it's a, it's a pretty shot to pull off. I'm sure a lot of you have seen Phil Mickelson do it on tour, um, but it should only be used when you absolutely need it. So that's why I'm only going to be practicing a few of them. And this is, again, for me, just feel other than the fundamentals I just mentioned for you, ball forward, club face open, stance open, swing across the ball. Uh, there's not a ton else I can tell you other than practice these shots uh, because if one doesn't go well uh, and you blade it and you skull it, that ball's going to go far just because of the length of the swing. So I'm just working on a little bit of getting that feel, getting the practice, getting the repetition that comes with having a solid short game. And at the end, I do a little bit of work in the rough. I did not film all the work in the rough, but what I do is I drop the balls down. Sometimes I throw them up in the air and then drop them down. Um, and that's just my way of um, simulating good lies or bad lies or how different the lies can be. So um, just trying to accelerate through the ball, swing down through the ball. That's what I'm practicing there. Uh, but while this goes on, I just want to thank everybody for watching this video. I the apparel that I wear in these videos. I wear John Morgan Sportswear. They are a proud partner of Scratch Golf Tips. And you can shop their store in the link in uh, the description. You can also use the code SGT2021 for 20% off your order. And uh, I hope you all enjoy this video. Play well and take care.